3.1 says uh, calculate uh, the gradient of BE. Uh, for the sake of time, I won't write the question again, uh, but I highly advise you to read the question before you attempt any question. So the gradient uh, of BE will determine it by uh, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Uh, for B, uh, the points is K and K. And then for E, uh, the points is uh, 12 and 0. So because B is made up of K and K, uh, we cannot determine the gradient of BE using B because there's unknowns. But then instead of using B, we can use C instead because C lies on the same line as B and E. So the gradient of that line is the same everywhere, right? So we're not going to use um, B, but we're going to use C and E. Um, now from this point, we have to decide which uh, coordinate we take in as the second coordinate and which one we take in as the first. So let's just take E as the second coordinate. So this will be X2, uh, Y2, and then this will be X1, uh, Y1. So the gradient will just be equals to um, 0 minus minus 2 divided by 12 minus 4, uh, which is going to give us 2 divided by 8, which is 1 divided by 4. If you do it the other way around and you start with C, uh, you still get you still get 1 over 4. And then 3.1.2 says calculate the gradient of AB. Um, we know that uh, A is made out of a minus 2 and 10. And then B is made out of K and K. So we cannot use this formula that says y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 because uh, not only is B uh, consisting of unknown values, but there's no other point uh, that is uh, that is on AB. So we cannot do what we did in 3.1.1. So what we can do here, we can say that tan theta equals to the gradient theta being the angle of inclination this angle here you can always relate it to the gradient uh, by this formula tan theta equals to the gradient of um, a b so if we go ahead and do that we'll get tan of 81.87 equals to the gradient of a b if you put that in your calculator, you get tan 81.87 is 7. So this is 7 is the gradient of AB, which makes sense because AB is very steep, right? Um, let's move ahead. We have 3.2. So 3.2 says determine the equation of BE in the form y equals to mx plus c we know that the gradient of uh, be uh, which we have calculated above is 1 divided by 4 so now we have y equals to 1 divided by 4 x plus c uh, from here we're going to substitute either c or e in this equation to determine c uh, so let's uh, substitute uh, E. So E is made out of uh, 12 and 0, right? So we're going to get 0 equals to 1 over 4 uh, multiplied by 12 plus C. So this is um, C equals to uh, minus 1 over 4 multiplied by 12, which is equals to minus 3. So we have y equals to 1 over 4x minus 3. I hope that is clear. Uh, you can substitute c instead and you still get the same thing, right?
yeah let's move ahead so now we have 3.3 3 3 .3 uh, says calculate the coordinates of B where K is less than zero so we know that the equation of B is y equals to 1 over 4 x minus 3 and then B is made out of K and K because B is made out of K and K the x and the y coordinates are the same if we substitute it into our equation uh, this equation here we're gonna have one variable and we're gonna be able to solve it but then if that was not the case and maybe it was made out of k and q we'd have to find the equation of line a b and then we equate the equation of line a b and b e to find the x coordinate of b and then after that we can find y but then just because b is made out of k and k we don't have to do that we can just substitute it into into this equation but then this is a very special problem because very rarely will you have a situation where you can just substitute and then you find x and y simultaneously so let's go ahead and do that we're gonna get k we're gonna get k equals to 1 over 4 multiplied by k minus 3 so we're gonna get k minus 1 over 4 k equals to minus 3 so we're going to get um, 3 divided by 4k equals to uh, minus 3. So we're going to get 3k equals to minus uh, 12. So k equals to minus 4. So b is minus 4 and minus 4. Like the question is suggested, k is less than 0 and that's exactly what we found 3.3.2 says calculate the size of a we know that um angle angle a uh, g uh, a g um, e is equals to uh a f e uh, plus angle a because uh an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of two opposite interior so what we can do we can calculate uh, this angle right after we calculate this angle we know what this angle is so the only thing we'll be left with it's a which is what you're interested in so how do we calculate a g e we calculate a g e uh, using tan theta equals to m so we'll have a uh, theta equals to uh, tan arc of uh, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 right um we're using a and c so if we take c as the second point we're gonna get tan arc uh c is the second point so y2 is minus 2 minus uh, y1 is 10 divided by 4 minus minus 2 so if i put that in the calculator i get uh, minus 2 minus 10 divided by 4 plus 2 and then that gives you minus 63.4349 if you get a negative angle you always have to add 180 and then if I add 180 um, let me just I get uh one one six point five six five one degrees so now i know that one one six point five six five one degrees is equals to 
uh, AFE, which is 81.87 uh, plus, plus A, right? So A is equals to 116.5651 minus 8187. And this will give me, so I'm taking all of these and then, so I have 116.5651 5651 minus 81.87 uh, that's giving me 34.6951 degrees so that's the uh coldly, that's the that's the size of angle a so 3.3.3 uh says coordinates of point of the point of intersection of the diagonals of parallelogram A C E S where S is in the first quadrant. So let's assume that uh, S is somewhere here. So this is the parallelogram and then uh, these are our uh, diagonals, right? And then the question goes on to say, oh, so we're supposed to determine uh, the point of intersection, this point here. This point here is the midpoint between S and C and the midpoint between E and A. So what this question is basically asking us to do is to find the midpoint of uh, A and E. So we're going to have, um, let's call the midpoint M, right? So what we're going to have, uh, we're going to have x2 plus x1 divided by 2 y2 plus y1 divided by 2 that's how you determine um, the the midpoint and then x2 we can take a as the second point or we can take e as the second point but then let's just take e as the second point so we're gonna have 12 plus minus 2 divided by 2 and then for y we have 0 uh, plus 10 divided by 2 and then this gives us uh, 5 and 5 so the point of intersection of the diagonals of the parallelogram ACES is 5 and 5 right um, 3.4 3.4.1 says uh, another point T uh, which is made out of P and P, uh, where P is greater than zero, is plotted such that uh, E T equals to B E equals to four uh, square root of seventeen. And then the first question says, calculate the coordinates of T. These kind of questions seem tricky. But what you have to do, like I always advise, is to stick to the basics. Like, start with the information you know and try move towards uh, finding out what you don't know. So we are told that ET is equals to BE is equals to 4 square root of 17. And then... Um, We can, so because we want to determine, uh, we, can, we want to determine T, and then T is made out of uh, two identical coordinates. We can sort of use the distance formula to figure it out because we know what um, the length of the line is supposed to be. So let's say, um, so let's say, uh, okay, T. Uh, it's made out of P and P, and let's say this is uh, X1, and then this is Y1, and then uh, let's take uh, the coordinates of E and say this is uh, this is 12, and then this is there, right, and then this is X2, and then this is uh, y, Y2. So if we use the distance formula, we're going to get um, the square root of um y2 uh, y2 is 0 minus 
y1 which is p right squared uh, plus uh, x2 x2 is 12 minus x1 uh, which is p again and then squared and then this is equals to um, 4 square root of 17 this is the distance formula this is the distance formula in place of x we substituted p in place of y we substituted p again because t is made out of uh, p and p for x and y right so let's get rid of the square root so we're squaring both sides uh, we're gonna get um, 0 minus actually let's solve that too so we're just gonna get uh, minus p squared uh, plus 12 minus p squared equals to uh, 4 multiplied by square root of 17 everything squared which is 272 so minus p squared will be p squared and then if we solve that we get uh, 12 multiplied by 12 is 144 and then 12 multiplied by minus p is minus 12 p multiplied by 2 is minus 24 p and then minus p multiplied by minus p that's plus p squared which is equals to 272 if we uh, take 272 to the left hand side we get 2p squared plus 144 um no uh, minus 144 is gonna be subtracted by 272 so let me write a minus 24p first so we're gonna have minus 24p and then 144 minus 272 uh, which will give us minus 128 uh, equals to zero. Uh, we can take two as a common factor. We're gonna get p squared minus 12p minus 64 equals to zero, and then we can uh, we can we can factorize this. Which two numbers do you multiply? They give you 64, and then you add them, and they give you minus 12. Uh, that is minus 16 and 4 so we're gonna have p uh, minus 16 multiplied by p uh, plus 4 equals to 0 so p equals to 16 or p equals to minus 4 so our equation said that p is greater than 0 right so this is the correct value of p p cannot be cannot be uh, equals to minus 4 because our question uh, was explained in saying that p is equals to uh, is greater than 0 so 3.4.2 uh, determine the equation of the circle and then um, circle with center e e is made out of 12 and 0 uh, passing through b and t so it's passing through uh, b and t okay so we have x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals to r squared so x minus in place of a uh, we're going to put uh, the x coordinate of the what do we call this the x coordinate of uh, the point at the center uh, which is e so we're gonna have minus 12 squared uh, plus y um, b is zero the y coordinate of the center so just have y squared equals to and then what's what is r squared what is r squared it is said that e is the center and then on the circumference we have b and t so from the question we were solving above we know that et is equal to eb is equal to uh, 4 uh, multiplied by uh, the square root of 17 so 4 multiplied by the square root of 17 squared will determine it above and it's 
272. So that's how um, we'd solve this one. And then B, B says uh, tangent to the circle at point uh, B. So the center, we have E. And then at the circumference somewhere, uh, we have B, uh, which is K, K. And then we're supposed to find the equation of this tangent here. So um, what's the gradient of EB? If we calculate the gradient of EB, then we can um, we can we can we can use uh, that formula that says uh, the product of the gradients of uh, a tangent and the line is equals to minus one. Okay, so we determined the gradient of uh, of EB above using EC, and we see that. Uh, let me check. Um, we see that the gradient is is one over four. So the gradient of EB multiplied by the gradient of the tangent is equals to minus one. This is the formula I was talking about. So we know that this is one divided by four. Uh, multiply by the m of the tangent right which is equals to uh, minus one so m of tangent equals to minus four so we have y equals to mx plus c and then y equals to minus four x plus c um, and then uh, point B. Point B. We've determined the case for point B. Uh, let me check. 3.3.1. Uh, minus 4 and minus 4. So we have minus 4 and minus 4. Of which, if we substitute them in the equation, we'll get minus 4 equals to minus 4 multiplied by minus 4 plus Z. A whole lot of minus 4s. So, uh, plus C here. Yeah. So we're gonna get minus four equals to minus four by minus four, 16 plus C. So C equals to minus 20. So Y equals to minus four X minus 20.